Good morning. My name is Dr. Kieran Slavin from North American Spine and Pain. Uh, and we're here to talk about a lumbar radiofrequency neurotomy procedure. Patients kindly agreed to allow us to film this for educational purposes. So, first order of business obviously is sterile draping, as you can see. Uh, fully drape the patient and keep the area exposed. Can I really going to feel a sting in the burn? Pinch. Next order of business is to align the C arm to get the best possible view. Uh, as always, you want to get the right view whenever you're doing an interventional spinal procedure. Uh, spend an extra couple of minutes sting the burn. Taking the time to get that view correct before you start the procedure is time well spent. The outcomes will be better and the patient will thank you because the procedure time will be shorter. Another sting. At this point, local anesthesia obviously has been used. Get the skin surface numb. Sting the burn. Now we're just going to refollow my initial tracks and the angle that the needle is going to take from the top down here. More numbing. Careful attention not to numb or anesthetize too deep is important. Obviously, when we get the radio frequency probes in position, we're actually going to need to make sure that neural structures, uh, the dorsal rami, are not denervated with local anesthesia so that we can test and make sure that the needle is in the correct position close to the dorsal ramus in order to get maximum pain relief, analgesia, and the best outcome. We're going to use some 10 centimeter yellow radio frequency probes here. The direction to which the needle bevel is bent towards. So that's important to remember. Careful to keep obviously gloves only style part on the patients. Needles are positioned following the angle of the fluoroscope. In the image, I should say, the beam. I'm going to control the paddle. Typically, we take it back and forth. The radiology tech and has access, obviously, to um, running the, fl the fluoroscope, as does the provider. So needles are being advanced slowly under intermittent fluoroscopic guidance towards the eye of the Scotty dog on the pedicles at each of the vertebral bodies to block dorsal rami, lumbar three, four, two. You're doing great. Careful attention to detail with exact position of the needle tip is critical leads to again the best outcome and the most or least uncomfortable um, position for the patient so here we can see the needles in position we're gonna pull out our radio frequency probes insert those for the cannula a big each needle tip is at the eye of the Scotty dog at the pedicle of the lumbar vertebral bodies. And at the lower, lowermost level, the needle tip is located between the sacral ala and the superior articulating process of S1, which is the medial structure. Sacral ala is, of course, the lateral structure. Give yourself plenty of room so that the probes are not actually pulled away from the patient. A little bit of a strain. What does it feel like? Okay. Good. We'll confirm with a lateral view um, once the testing has been done in order to make sure that none of the needle tips have uh, inadvertently gone into the foramen. Uh, we're up and running again. This is the third test. You feel anything yet? Yes. Good.
last one coming. Let us know when you feel it. We're starting now. Yeah. Good. Now we're going to do the motor testing. Motor testing allows us to make sure you're going to feel some tapping sensation here in the low back. It may go into the buttocks. It should not go into the leg. I'm going to keep my hands in both locations to ensure you're feeling in the right place. Go ahead. Thanks, Janice. What I want to make sure is that the needle tip is close to the sensory nerve, but far enough away from the motor nerve so that we get denervation of the sensory structures without having any motor nerve um, denervation or ablation to follow, obviously. Good. So what we're going to do now is uh, take a lateral view in order to make sure that the needle tips are the appropriate location on lateral imaging. And then I'm going to inject some 2% local anesthesia at each of the four injection sites. So you can see on this lateral image that the needle tips are coming in and touching down on the pedicles. And no, at, no, at no level does the needle tip advance into the neural foramen. Rather, they are posterior here at the level of the pedicle at each of the three upper levels and at the level of the sacral area at the lowest level. Next step is to have deep local anesthetic, 2% lidocaine injected. We're going to feel some pressure on the marine. Lined up here, we'll be doing the test in shortly. So we have the L3, L4, L2, L3, L4, L5 dorsal rami at the level of the pedicle of the L3, L4, L5 vertebral bodies. And again, this this needle for the L5 dorsal ramus is, is junction between the sacral ala and the uh, superior articulating process of S1. So now it's testing time. Take a nice deep breath for me. Take another deep breath. Having a pulse oximeter in your patient allows you to monitor not just the oxygen saturation, but the heart rate simultaneously. Can alert you to early signs if the patient's going to have a vagal episode so that you can take intermediate action to prevent there being anything significant sequelae. So what we do now is we wait for 90 seconds to allow this 2% local anesthetic to take its effect at the level of the dorsal rami. Then we're going to have an ablation that will take um, 90 seconds. Uh, we'll set up for ablation, Janice. And for lesion, we have 90 seconds of ablation. Um, this is how you safely perform the procedure. And we look forward to uh, showing you other procedures as part of the NASPAC learning series. Thank you.